Lesson 78, Agreement. In German, words work together with other words. And when words work together with other words, they have to share the same set of characteristics. Example, if you have an article that's masculine and it's introducing a noun, the noun must also be masculine. If you have a verb and a pronoun like we are or wir sind, the pronoun is a first person plural pronoun and the verb is a first person plural verb. Okay, so gender, person, number, these are all characteristics that words can have. So when two words have to share those characteristics in a certain way, we call that agreement. Again, this is when two words have to share a certain characteristic so that they can work together. And this is important in German, also in English, but especially in German. And so in this lesson, we're going to show you a few different ways in which you must have agreement in German. Lisa, I have to warn you, in this lesson, we wrote some incorrect examples to show them what not to do. <laughs> Sometimes that's good and very helpful. Well, don't cringe when you see the incorrect German sentences. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to. Well, the good thing about this is that the listeners are a little bit familiar with this already because the way that you and Brendan introduced nouns and articles, you already made very clear that they always have to match and to agree. Yes, we've been introducing this concept as we go along. But in this lesson, we just wanted to take a moment to focus on agreement as a whole. So let's jump in here and look at the first section, which is case. So far, you know two cases, you know nominative and accusative. And here, what we're telling you is that if an article introduces a noun, that article and that noun must be in the same case. So ich bin der Mann, der is nominative, and Mann is nominative. If you have den Mann, you're in big trouble because the article is accusative and the noun is nominative. You know it's nominative because it's ich bin, right? That's the structure of the sentence. Right. We have a linking verb here, not one that would ask for the accusative case or a direct object. So this is a simple example of how you must have agreement between the definite article and the noun that it introduces. Let's move on to number. Lisa, why don't you take us through this one? We have an issue with singular and plural here, don't we? That's right. So we want to make sure when we have an article and a noun that they both are in the same number. So in our example, we have Ich bin der Mann. Der is a singular article and Mann is a singular noun. So this is a correct sentence. The second sentence, however, is Ich bin der Männer. And here you see, this doesn't quite match up. First, Männer, you know, this is plural, but the article in front of it, der, that is one that you know is a singular article. So this is a mismatch. Also, you see that the verb in the sentence, bin, and the pronoun, ich, are also singular. So this sentence is just altogether not working out. We could describe the situation here by saying that the words don't agree, right? Dea is singular, mena is plural. So those two do not agree. Right. We're looking for agreement. If they agreed, we could say they agree, but as it stands now, they don't agree. So that's the terminology you can use to talk about these situations as you think about grammar. Gender is also a concern. It's yet another way in which words can work together, and we have to have agreement. Above, we looked at how a definite article and the noun it introduces must be the same in case. Well, they also have to be the same in gender. So we have das Mädchen. Mädchen is neuter. So we have the neuter definite article, das. In the second example, we have der Mädchen. Is incorrect. It's a masculine article, 
with a neuter noun. As we say here in the book, that's a grammar fail. So to sum it up, for nouns, you want to look at three things. You want to make sure that the article and the noun are the same in number, that is singular or plural, in gender, masculine, neuter or feminine, and also in their case. For now, that is nominative or accusative. Lisa, you know how I analyze nouns when I'm working with German? Tell me. On a case-by-case -case basis. <laughs> anyway, so yes, as Lisa says, we have case, number, and gender. Those are the three basic characteristics of nouns and articles. And so really what we're trying to do here is build your awareness of these grammatical principles. And this will help you with not only producing correct German, but it will help you with error detection. That is detecting when something's not right and enabling you to fix it. Lisa, we already touched on this, but we also have an issue with subjects and verbs needing to agree. Verbs have a different set of characteristics than nouns, though. They share some of the characteristics, like number. For example, a verb could be viewed as singular or plural in the same way that a noun could be viewed as singular or plural. But we also have the idea of person, first, second, third person. So when it comes to the subject of a sentence and the verb, we have a couple of different characteristics or factors in which they must agree. And oftentimes that involves a pronoun. Like here we have the pronoun via. Via and zent just kind of go together because via is a first person plural pronoun. Zent is the verb form that goes with uh, that particular pronoun. It is also first person plural. But Lisa, you might want to cover your ears for this. We have a <laughs> via ist. Ah, it's terrible German, right? <laughs> it sounds pretty bad. But the point is here that they don't agree. Via is first person plural. Ist is third person singular. So again, we're just raising your awareness of these grammatical issues so you can know when the German is correct and detect errors when it's wrong. As we say in the book, Lisa, it would be like saying we is. Right. Lisa, before we finish up this lesson, there's one more kind of agreement that I want to talk about here. And this is a little bit more subtle, maybe a bit more sophisticated, maybe. And this has to do with pronouns and antecedents. So the word antecedent, literally, it means something that comes before something else. And the reason we call it that is because that's what a pronoun can refer back to. Like in our first example here, the girl is thirsty, but she has no water. The word she is a pronoun. A pronoun, as you know, takes the place of a noun. But what noun is it taking the place of? Well, it's taking the place of the word girl. And so as far as grammatical terms, we've been learning lots of grammatical terminology in this book. As far as grammatical terms go, we can call the word girl the antecedent. So the word she is the pronoun, and it's referring back to the antecedent, which is the word girl, and it's replacing it. We could say the girl is thirsty, but the girl has no water. But that doesn't sound very smooth. It sounds better to replace the word girl the second time with a pronoun, the word she. The girl is thirsty, but she has no water. So Lisa, in English, this is fairly simple because for us in English, the relationship between the word girl and the word she is pretty clear. We know that the word girl is feminine according to natural gender, but the actual word itself, girl, doesn't have gender because we don't have gendered nouns in English. But with German, it's a bit more complicated. Could you take us through this next sentence, actually the next two sentences, and explain to us what's happening with the relationship between the pronouns and their antecedents. Yes. So our German example sentences here are Das Mädchen hat Durst, aber es hat kein Wasser. 
and you see underlined Mädchen. If you look, Mädchen has the article das, which tells you it's a neuter noun. That is why in the second part of the sentence, the pronoun es is there to replace it. Now, in our second German sentence, it's a little different. It says here, das Mädchen hat Durst, aber sie hat kein Wasser. You see, the pronoun in the second part of the sentence here is sie, which is she, which is not quite correct in a way. So there are Germans who do talk that way. <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm struggling to say it's not quite correct, because the grammatical gender of das Mädchen is, of course, neuter. But the natural gender, we all know that a girl is feminine. So that's why even Germans use both. And for me, it's fine if you want to say Z here. For me, I love this example because it shows clearly the difference between grammatical gender and natural gender. There's a conflict here between the grammatical gender of the word Mädchen, not the idea of a girl, but the word that means girl is grammatically neuter. But the idea or the concept of a girl, we view that as feminine. So you have the gender of the actual word and then the gender of the concept or the idea of a girl. And they're kind of in conflict here. So if you're a German speaker and you're saying this sentence, you have to decide. In the second half of the sentence, will I say S to reflect the grammatical gender of the word Machen? Or will I say Z to reflect the idea of a girl, which is feminine? For me, this is really interesting from a linguistic standpoint. Right. Well, maybe the good thing about this is that you cannot really do it wrong in this case. Unless you have somebody who's very strict about their grammar and they will complain if you say Z or she here. But the general German will not complain.